Okay, you guys, in this section, we're having uh, more fun with radicals. You thought you could have all the fun you could have. Well, you were wrong. Uh, the goal is to multiply and simplify radical expressions. Okay, the, the big we're going to use a couple of big rules in this section, but the, new, the, the, the big rule that's kind of new in this section is how to multiply radicals together. So the big rule is this. If you want to take the nth root of A <coughs> times the nth root of B, then it turns out you can, as long as the indices are the same, then you can write one big nth root and then underneath that nth root, multiply the radicands. In other words, the nth root of A times the nth root of B is the nth root of A times B. And this, y you guys know the equal sign is a two-way street, right? So it works both ways. The nth root of A times the nth root of B is equal to the nth root of A times B, but you can also think of it the other way around. The nth root of A times B is equal to the nth root of A times the nth root of B, which we kind of already talked about, right? We, we talked about the fact that an nth root breaks up over multiplication, doesn't it? And that's exactly what's happening here. So you can think of that big rule for multiplication uh, going in both directions, how to, how to multiply uh, two separate radicals or how to unmultiply them, right? That, that'd be the second way to go. So that's the big rule we want to think about. And the way I justified it the other day, well, I didn't prove it to you, but I, I made you believe it by, by just thinking of it in terms of, well, what if you, you take the square root of 4 times the square root of 9? According to this rule, what should that be equal to? The square root of 4 times 9, right? Is, is it true? Well, that 4 times 9 is 36, so the square root of 36 is what? 6, but then individually, what's the square root of 4? Square root of 9, 3, 2 times 3 is, is 6, last time I checked. So either way you look at it, whether you multiply the roots separately um, or you look at them combined, you get 6 ultimately, don't you? So it helps you believe that rule. It's not, you can't prove a rule with one example, but but it helps you believe it. So that's one of the big rules we're going to use today. Uh, another big rule that we've already talked about is the fact that the nth root of a to the n is equal to the absolute value of a, but under the right conditions, if you can assume a is greater than or equal to 0, for instance, then you can say the nth root of a to the n is equal to just a, right? So we've talked about that rule before. Again, that's, you can lose the absolute value if n is odd, or if n happens to be even, then um, you can lose the absolute value if you assume a is bigger than or equal to 0. So those are the two big rules that are going to help us when multiplying and simplifying radicals today. Using the multiplication version of the rule, if you're asked to multiply the square root of 2x times the square root of 14y, what does that rule, the first rule we talked about, uh, say? That's equal to one big square root of what? There you go, 2x times 14y. So we can't multiply, other than writing the multiplication down, we can't multiply x times y, but we can multiply the 2 times the 14, right? So how does that simplify? The square root of 28xy. Right? Couldn't be much easier. I mean, how else, how else would you want to multiply it? 